Hi all, and welcome to the Medical AI Lab uh, session. Today, I'm delighted that we have J1 uh, giving us a talk on scaling up vision language free training for image captioning. Uh, without further ado, uh, thanks J1, and please take it away. Thank you. Okay, hello, my name is J1, and today I'll go over scaling up vision language free training for image captioning, which is a research published by Microsoft. Uh, so for table of contents, we have introduction, related works, and methods. So for method sections, we'll go over both the pre-training data set as well as a VLP model, a vision language training model that the authors proposed. And then we'll take a quick look at the training objective for this VLP model, and then go over some interesting studies they introduced to us in the experiment and the ablation sections. Okay, now for the introduction. So the authors noted that scale has been very important in today's AI research. And for scale, I mean both in terms of data and model size. So it would be intuitive for all of you that if you have a lot of pre-trained data, it only makes sense to increase the model size as well. And the authors noted that recently we've noted that both clip and align model exhibited the power of scale when it comes to image text retrieval task. However, at the same time, Little is known about the scaling properties when it comes to image captioning. So the authors have two main contributions here. The first one is that they present vision language pre-training scaling rule for image captioning. So as I've said before, scaling rule, they apply it to both two domains, model size. So they vary the model size from as small as 30 million parameters to as big as 675 million parameters. And similarly for data set, so for pre-trained data, they train the model with as small as 3 million samples up to 200 million samples. Also their second contribution would be this one. So they present this new model called Lemon, which is short for large scale image captioner that achieves state of the art for several benchmarks for image captioning. And authors included the Lemon emoji next to the name. So I just decided to keep it there as well. Mm, let's go over some related works. So recently we've seen a boom of VLP methods and the list below is just some of the examples that they've introduced, introduced. And they also noted that they've referred to VinVL, which is the last element on the list as a reference model they, they, yes, they were inspired of when they came up with the lemon model. Uh, although there has been like active ongoing research on VLP methods itself, the scaling behavior of VLP remains less studied. So most works pre-trained their VLP models on less than 4 million images, whereas the authors pre-trained their models on up to 200 million images. Now they note that CLIP and ALIGN were both trained on 400 million and 1.8 billion images, which are a lot, but more than 200 images that they're dealing with. However, the focus of the two models were on image text retrieval, whereas the focus of the author's research is image captioning. So there's slight difference here. Now for the scaling law, similarly, there has a scaling law has been studied when it comes to language models as well as, as well as vision transformers for image classification. But at the same time, they say no previous research has been done for VLP scaling behavior for, for image captioning. And they say they're the first one to explore this domain. Now let's take a look at the method. So they experiment with a scaling law for both the data set aspect as well as the model size aspect. Let's first go over the data set part. So instead of using a pre-existing one, they came up with their own data set, which is called Alt200M. This is also an image capturing data set. So for image portion of the samples, they just crawled them from the internet. And for the caption part, they refer to out attribute for the image, which usually describes what's going on in the given image. So the total size of the training size will be 200 million samples of image comma caption pairs. And they've applied as minimal filtering as possible so that the data set they have can follow the natural distribution of images. And the picture on the right gives us a word cloud of the top 200 words. So we have background, city, white, woman, New York <laughs> going on there. Uh, and here we have some examples of the samples that they've collected for the Alt 200M. So this is basically image and its corresponding alt caption. So when you look at the first two rows, seems like the captions are doing a pretty good job explaining the image. 
However, they've noted that for example, nine and 11, the sentence structure is not the best. And when you look at the last row, we can also see that the alt attributes are not always like a perfect description of the image. So for instance, if you take a look at picture 15, there's no way for us to know that the woman is talking about the government and the community effort to fight child, childhood obesity. So alt to under M can be a bit noisy, but in general, it is a good, data set, that's what the authors were trying to suggest here. Uh, and, we and here we compare Alt 200M with several pre-existing data sets. I know there are a lot of numbers here, so I just highlighted some key takeaways that we should look at. So for the first one, we compare CC 12M, which is conceptual captions 12M, also a data set commonly referred to when it comes to image captioning. So when we compare Alt 200M to this one, we can see that the Altern M has about 60 more images than this data set. And when it comes to unique, unique vocabularies, uh, the size of Altern M is about like almost twice more than the number of unique unigrams in CC 12M. And about 56% of the total unigrams in Altern M sum up to only 0.1% of the total unigrams in the data set, which means that we have an extremely long tail of rare unigrams. And when it comes to length of this data set, it's longer on average than the COCO caption data set. Uh, now let's look at the second part, which is gonna be the model for scaling law. So here they introduce lemon, which is a combination of image feature extractor and a transformer. And they've been inspired of this structure from a previous work called BinVL. Now for the image feature extractor part, we, uh, they use pre-trained faster RCN and detector. And then by using this detector, they achieve three things. They first extract image region features from the given image. And they also uh, come up with a scale bounding boxes using this detector and concatenate that information to the image region feature that we've extracted above. And since this faster RCNM model is a detector, they also detect the object tags for the image region features, and they pass on all three, all three information to the next step, which is gonna be the transformer. So the purpose of appending a transformer at the end is to perform multimodal fusion. And by a multimodal fusion, I mean tokenizing, uh, fusing the tokenized caption. So a caption uh, in terms of alternate M would be the alt attributes. So, so the caption part would be the caption of the uh, image caption data set. And we also, we are fusing that with, with image and tag embeddings from the extractor that we've seen in the previous slide. So the transformer we have here is multi-layered, which means it's a stack of encoders. And one encoder is consisted of multi-head self-attention, MSA in short, with a feed forward layer. And they've used sequence to sequence attention mask here so that they can enable text generation with only an encoder. So here we take a deep look at how the MSA works. So let's first go over some um, symbols. So the union sign there means concatenation. And for input, we have V, T, and W. So V will be the image embeddings, T will be the object tags token embeddings, and W will be the captions token embeddings. So for these three parts, we are applying multi-head self-attention where X, the first argument serves as a query for attention and V concatenated with T here would be to serve as both the key value and key and the value of a traditional attention scheme. So with these three as a given, the output will be the R values at the left side of the equation. And the R value will either fed into the next layer if that's not the next layer, uh, if, if it's not the final layer, and if it is a final layer, then we would use these R values to make the prediction at the very end. Well, here we go over some architecture for a lemon. So we, so the authors tested eight different varying sizes of the lemon model from tiny to huge. Uh, and further on, if they refer to lemon base, it'll refer to the model on the fifth row of parameter size of 100, about 111 million parameters and a huge one will be a model with 675 million parameters. And the flop 
and the flop number is calculated on the rightmost column. Uh, it's based on the number of seconds it took to pass 50 image regions and 35 text tokens in one four pass. And the image region features dimension is 2054. And to make it fit the width of the transformer, they've applied a linear layer to shrink it down. Uh, training for this training objective, they've used sequence to sequence mass language modeling. Uh, since they since image caption is a generation task, they thought a bidirectional mass language modeling where you can take a look at what comes afterwards would be suboptimal. So they went with sequence to sequence one. So if you set W to be the original caption, we come up with a corrupted version of W with 15% of its token mass. And this masking scheme follows a scheme that Bird Paper introduced, so nothing new here. And for the D days, uh, and D is for the subset of the mass positions, and CE in the equation down below stands for cross entropy with softmax. And yes, so this is a loss equation they have. So given the image in given the image and the object tag, uh, inferenced by inferenced by the faster RCNN detector, as well as the first W tokens, we're predicting the case token. And yes, yeah, so this is basically the loss equation for training lemon. And they've used this equation, they've used this loss function for both pre-training and fine tuning. Oh, now let's go over to the experiment part. So here we train lemon. So as, I, as I've noted before, we test eight different configurations of lemon of varying sizes. The smallest one has 13 million parameters and the biggest one has 675 million parameters. And for the pre-trained data, they also come up with five subsets of alt 200 m to test the scaling law of pre-training data set size. So the smallest one will contain 3 million samples and the largest one will contain 200 million samples. And they all they, sub, they sample the subsets so that the larger data sets is always a superset of the smaller ones. And to compare Lemon as well as the pre-training data, as well as alternate M with other data set, they've included, so here we compare the data set as well as the model, Lemon model to other data sets slash models. So the other pre-trained data sets we consider here are conceptual captions 3M, 12M, and they also note another data set as 1.8B. I'm, I'm, I'm not sure if that's the name of the data set itself, but however, 1.8B is the model, is the data set they've used, data set the authors of online paper used to train the online model. And they use the COCO data set to fine tune all the models that they test here. And for the evaluation benchmark, they've used no caps, which is the development set gathered to evaluate object captioning at scale. And by scale, they mean like objects that don't occur that frequently. So to take a look at how they how the other authors came up with a no caps data set, no caps data set consists of 15,100 images from open images, and they have 600 object categories. 400 of them has not been seen in Coco. This is very interesting. So what the authors of this paper, authors of this lemon paper did is they further split this no caps into three splits and they've named them in domain, near domain, out domain. And this domain here refers to the Coco fine tuning data set. So in domain basically would be objects that has also been objects in no caps that has also been seen in Coco whereas out domain one would be objects in no caps that did not appear in the fine tuning COCO data set. And the model's behavior in out domain will be very interesting because here the models would only have to, would have to rely on their external, so pre-trained knowledge to classify novel objects that they haven't seen during the fine tuning phase. Uh, and this is a result of the models tested against the no caps benchmark uh, so here, all the models are tested against no caps. The first 14 rows are for a validation set and the bottom six rows are for the test set of the no caps. All the models here are fine tuned on Coco, as I've mentioned earlier. There are a lot of numbers here. I've, so, I've, so I've highlighted some key uh, findings that the authors noted in the paper. So let's first look at row eight and 12. 
So rule eight is lemon-based model with about 100 million parameters that hasn't been pre-trained at all and was just trained, fine-tuned slash just trained on Coco. Whereas rule 12, we have lemon-based model that has been pre-trained on Ultron.m and further fine-tuned on Coco. So if you compare these two numbers, 91.4 versus 107.7, for in-domain uh, split of no caps. So when you take a look at the CIDR score is improved by about 16 here, whereas out of domain is improved by 45. So here the authors concluded that including pre-training data does help the model perf model's performance in general. It helps a lot when it comes out of domain since the models apparently using their pre-trained knowledge to inference, make inference on uh, objects that they haven't seen during fine tuning phase. So, so the green one, eight and 12 compare, compare they fix a model and they compare the pre-training data. And when you look at the two blue rows, two blue and the red rows, so one, nine, two, 10, here they fix the pre-training data and they're comparing the model architecture. So here they concluded that since the lemon-based model performs better than encoder-decoder model with attention mass. So here they conclude that the lemon architecture they're introducing is also has a nice performance than other models. And last but not least, if you take a look at the three yellow numbers down below, so 110.3 is the current uh, state-of-the-art for no caps uh, leaderboard which has been achieved by SimVLM. And Lemon Large and Huge, both pre-trained the Ultron M, they beat the current state of the art. So the authors proposed that their new method now achieves a new state of the art for this leaderboard. Uh, here we have models evaluated on COCO data set. So COCO Carpathy test split, which is for image captioning. They didn't, Get, go into as much detail as they did with a no caps one. But some key finding here would be that a uh, lemon huge pre trained on alternate M again achieved state of the art for with CIDR optimization for these three metrics. Uh, this was personally very, I found, I personally found this very interesting. So here, if we take a look at the lemon model's behavior in zero shot, so we have three different uh, generations. So B stands for baseline model trained on COCO without pre-training. So this is basically fine tuning slash just training itself. Uh, and for Z, we have models that are pre-trained on alternative M, but has not been fine tuned on COCO. And to further raise, further improve the quality of the generation, they've prepended the prefix of picture of to come up with a better generation for zero shot. And the fine-tuned one, the F1s take the best of both worlds. So they, so the models here are pre-trained on Ultron, Ultron M and then it has been fine-tuned on Coco. So what they observe here is the zero-shot ones, they, do, they are still able to come up with a detailed explanation, even though the uh, nouns or, or the objects here are pretty like long tail. So for instance, for the first image, uh, the zero shot one was able to come up with the word geisha, whereas the baseline came up with a more generic caption of the image. And similar for this one, uh, the zero shot model came up with dinosaur skeleton, killer wear, that variant didn't occur even in a fine tuned one. So here the model came up with both Bavarian and tuba. And for the last one, it explains this to be ancient sword, whereas the baseline one is again, a bit more generic. Okay, so these are some main experiments that they've conducted. And now let's move on to the ablation, find, ablation studies. Okay, so here we compare, uh, here we take a look at the scaling law when it comes to data set size. So on the X axis, we have pre-training data set size. In the Y axis, we have the model performance. So in the data set size is 3M. So it'll be like this column, this column. So when the data set size is 3M, there's no big difference between the small model and the large model. So when you take a look at the first uh, graph, aside from a tiny model, all the small models and the 
of model, model from small to huge, they're all clustered here. So there's no big difference. However, when you increase the data set size, when you move along the x-axis, you can see the gap between the models um, get bigger, which means that the difference between models become more pronounced as you increase the data set size. And on the right side, we have three models that have been fine-tuned on COCO and evaluated on the three splits of no caps. And they note here that when you take a look at the gap between the models and in domain and the out domain, the gap for the out domains is always consistently bigger than the gaps between models and in domain, which suggests that the pre-training does help has a bigger impact when it comes to models making out domain predictions, out domain generations. And here we compare, here we look at how model size comes into work in, when it comes to scaling law. So similarly, when the data set size is 3M, so the plot with the navy color, uh, you can see even if you increase the model size, there's no noticeable improvement in model performance. So we may, we may conclude that baseline, with baseline model with about 100 million parameters would be enough when we only have 3 million samples in our data set. But as we end up coming up with a bigger data set, uh, increasing the model parameters, uh, increasing the number of model parameters does benefit a lot and does boost the model performance. So from this behavior, the authors conclude that if the data set size is unlimited, then the model size may become a bottleneck for model performance. But last but not least, we take a look at sample efficiency. And by sample efficiency, this basically means how fast the model is able to learn after seeing a certain number of samples. So sample seen in pre-training is on the x-axis. And what this basically means is batch size times number of train steps. So if the train set size is 10 million and it goes through all the sets in one epoch, and if there has been 10 epochs in total, then the total number of samples seen in pre-training would be 10 million times 10, so 100 million. Yes, so samples seen in pre-training is basically the number of samples that has passed through the model, including duplicates. Uh, and we can see for all five graphs that the larger model learns faster than the base model. And, it's, and the last graph is especially interesting. So this one, as before, has been fine-tuned on COCO and they evaluate them on no caps out domain. So the rightmost point on the base model graph has been trained for on 19 billion samples, but this one's performance is lower and this one's performance, this one's outperformed by a huge model that has only seen 0.8 billion models, which is the leftmost point on this graph. So here they conclude that pre, again, pre-training does help a lot when it comes to making out domain generations. Okay, now we'll go over some conclusions. So scaling up does help a lot when it comes to pre-training and authors also found if larger, larger training data is available, then, then the model size may become a bottleneck for model performance. At the same time, they suggested that if you increase both the pre-training data size and the model size, we may avoid a potential saturation plateau. And last but not least, Lemon achieves state of the art in various image captioning tasks. It can, so the Lemon model can recognize a lot of long tail visual objects and also shows an impressive performance in a zero shot manner. Thank you. Great, thanks, Jaewon, for the wonderful presentation.